Our new washer, just making sure there's no grit on there or anything. We can just slide that straight on and uh, make sure it's nice and evenly faced. If it's on at an angle, you won't be able to push it on. So put it on, take your time, just give it a gentle push up. And it might be a little tight right at the end. In fact, we may even have to kind of drift that on. Let's see, almost there. Like I say, just always with this sort of thing, go opposites and give it a little push along. And then our O-ring, as with most of these things, just to make the job a little bit easier, make it seal better and make it slide better. Get it nicely coated up. Now these can be a real wriggle. So we'll see how we do. You may have to use a little screwdriver just to ease it up over the splines there. And be careful, especially if you've only got the one kit to hand, you don't want to split it. So just lift it over ever so gently, just as far as you need. And then either roll it or slide it, however it goes along. But again, do it nice and evenly. You don't want to push it too far and stretch it and split it. Okay, I'm just actually going to have a go at just tapping that in very gently all the way round, and then we can push the spacer over, remember, with the chamfer on first. So using the rubber mallet and with the larger pin punch, just keep going round until, there we go, all the way home. Push the rubber o-ring in, get everything nice and up home. Just in case there's any grit gone in there, just make sure that's still nice and clean. Final wipe of grease to help seal the o-ring and then you might want to just put a little bit of grease inside the spacer to assist that on its way. And remember that chamfer is where the o-ring lives so that chamfer goes inboard. Slide it on and then we're ready to grease up the gasket, put it on and replace the actual hub cover itself. Okay, remember the orientation. We've got the little hole in the gasket to go over the drain hole that comes through our hub cover. This really is a job where you want to be scrupulously clean. So right from the start when we cleaned off the backing plate. And uh, here's one of the most fiddly parts of the job then. The large O-ring, which I suspect was the main reason for the failure. Basically, this lives around the bearing itself and it is prone to flying back off. So you need to push it on, hold the back in place, the backing plate, sorry, in place. And uh, this is one of those jobs where you could probably do with a friend to hand. Bit of grease over the face of the hub carrier. And then, <laughs> there we go, classic one. This is what you've got to watch out for back at home. The O-ring has come out. And that's probably what the last mechanic had issues with. If it starts to frustrate you, walk away, have a cup of tea, come back and give it another go. And it's so important that that seal is in the right place. And then as soon as you've got it all lined up Take nicely, time, you can just patient, loosely feed get a couple of bolts in diagonally and then just make sure that that seal's in the right place. So just doing it by hand to start off with and then you can feel if that rubber seal is going in nicely. If you were to just do it with a ratchet, you might miss it and cut that O-ring in two like the last non-VW mechanic had done. Well, it doesn't matter whether you've got a split, an early Type 3 or a Beetle, it's 36 foot-pounds is the torque you need on the hub carrier. It's the same for all years and all models. Once you've got the hub seal carrier actually torqued down into place, there's one final job to do before we can finish off, and that is just to uh, clean off, again with a bit of solvent, brake cleaner or whatever, any grease or any uh, gearbox oil that might still be floating around, because obviously the next job is going to be to uh, replace the brake shoes themselves. In summary then, replacing the hub oil seals on a swing axle car is a dirty, smelly job. If you take your time and clean everything off and do it methodically, it's relatively straightforward. And of course, once it's done, it does mean you won't have to top up your gearbox oil anymore and your brakes are going to work. <laughs>